This channel is all about emissions. Typically, these emissions refer to greenhouse gases and the consequences of too many people emitting an inordinate amount of fossil fuels, thus leading to the greenhouse effect. To capture the greenhouse effect, leave your vehicle in a parking lot for a few hours on a sunny day. When you get in your vehicle, you'll notice it's warm relative to outside the vehicle. This warmth results from long-wave radiation being trapped by your windows. This is why I frequently refer to a vehicle as a greenhouse on wheels. With today's video, I will focus on the emission of laser beams. That's unusual. Even less typically, I will focus on the emission of laser beams from peacock feathers. An article posted at Ars Technica on July 30th, 2025 is titled, Peacock Feathers Can Emit Laser Beams. Here's the subhead, quote, the feathers can emit two frequencies of laser light from multiple regions across their colored eye spots, end quote. The first paragraph refers to a paper in the renowned Nature series of peer-reviewed publications. Quote, Peacock feathers are greatly admired for their bright iridescent colors, but it turns out they can also emit laser light when dyed multiple times, according to a paper published in the journal Scientific Reports. Per the authors, it's the first example of a bio-laser cavity within the animal kingdom." End quote. The following four paragraphs provide a good explanation. Quote, the bright iridescent colors in things like peacock feathers and butterfly wings don't come from any pigment molecules, but from how they are structured. The scales of chitin, a polysaccharide common to insects, in butterfly wings, for example, are arranged like roof tiles. Essentially, they form a diffraction grating, except photonic crystals only produce certain colors or wavelengths of light, while a diffraction grating will produce the entire spectrum, much like a prism. In the case of peacock feathers, it's the regular periodic nanostructures of the barbules, fiber-like components composed of ordered melanin rods coated in keratin that produce the iridescent colors. Different colors correspond to different spacing of the barbules. Both are naturally occurring examples of what physicists call photonic crystals, also known as photonic band gap materials. Photonic crystals are tunable, which means they are precisely ordered in such a way as to block certain wavelengths of light while letting others through. Alter the structure by changing the size of the tiles, and the crystals become sensitive to a different wavelength. Even better, from an application's standpoint, the perception of color doesn't depend on the viewing angle, and the scales are not just for aesthetics, they help shield the insect from the elements. There are several types of man-made photonic crystals, but gaining a better and more detailed understanding of how these structures grow in nature could help scientists design new material with similar qualities, such as iridescent windows, self-cleaning sur self surfaces for cars and buildings, or even waterproof textiles. Paper currency could incorporate encrypted iridescent patterns to foil counterfeiters." End quote. I now turn to the peer-reviewed publication in Scientific Reports. This peer-reviewed open access journal is renowned for the paper by Strona and Bradshaw published on November 13, 2018 that introduced the idea of co-extinctions. The Scientific Reports paper published nearly seven years later is titled Spectral Fingerprint of Laser Emission from Rhodoamine 6G Infused Male Indian Peafowl Tail Feathers. It was created by five scholars and published on July 1, 2025. The abstract provides an excellent overview of the peer-reviewed paper. Quote, the light emissive properties of dye-infused barbules from Indian peafowl, pavo cristatus, tail feathers, is investigated at high intensities pumped at 532 nanometers. The dye-infused barbules were prepared by repeatedly wetting the eye spot with dye solution and allowing it to dry. While wet, and after wet-slash-dry cycling, across multiple parts of the same feather as well as across different feather samples, a highly conserved set of laser wavelengths was observed. While most feedback mechanisms in biological materials have been attributed to random lasers, 
The results presented in this article are in- inconsistent with this mechanism, and they suggest a critical structure inside the barbules which persists through different color regions of the eye spot. The laser thresholds were found to be below the random laser threshold for these materials, and the laser emission indicates that feedback structures with small gain volumes can be measured using this technique. This study also illustrates how persistent small-scale structures in biological materials act as low-quality resonators whose dispersion imprints on subsequent laser emission. End quote. The opening paragraph of the introduction to the recent paper in scientific reports is based on 18 other peer-reviewed papers. Quote, few technological breakthroughs have penetrated as deeply across different applications as the laser. Many classes of traditional, quasi-one-dimensional, mirrored cavity lasers exist, such as the gas laser, liquid dye laser, solid-state laser, chemical laser, and semiconductor laser. Laser emission can also be found in many non-traditional architectures, including distributed Bragg reflector lasers, distributed feedback lasers, random lasers, and whispering gallery mode lasers." End quote. Finally, the conclusion section provides a necessary conclusion, albeit with relatively obtuse language. Quote, the eye spot of a dye-doped peafowl tail feather was found to emit laser light from multiple structural color regions. Regions where the visible reflection bands were outside of the gain region of the dye were also found to emit laser light in some locations. The greatest laser intensity relative to the broad emission curve was found to be emitted from the green color region. The same laser line was also observed to e- to be emitted from areas in the brown and yellow color region. L- the laser lines emitted from the brown and yellow regions were characterized where it was shown that the brown region had a larger slope efficiency, but also a greater threshold as compared to the nanometer laser peak." End quote. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter. Despite the obtuse language, the take-home message here is clear. The living planet is far more complex than we have previously concluded. Furthermore, species we generally consider to be not particularly intelligent are capable of astonishing phenomena.